In 2017, Chelsea and I reviewed the Nikon D850, and we declared it the best camera ever made, and we meant it. We both switched to the D850 for everything from landscapes to portraits for wildlife. But shortly thereafter, the world sort of shifted to mirrorless, and Nikon only stumbled a little bit. We got pulled away to Sony and Canon, and a lot of you did too. And in fact, just about every camera reviewer ended up switching also. But some of you stayed loyal, and Nikon continued to fight. They didn't give up. And with the release of the Nikon Z9, I'm excited to say that Nikon is really back. They've produced an amazing camera that deserves another look. So as a little Valentine's Day thing, a love letter to Nikon and all the fans, I'm gonna cover 10 ways that the Nikon Z9 is better than the Sony A1. The first is that beautiful top screen. And yeah, on my Sony, I could get all the information on the rear screen, but you know, having the settings on the top screen means I can dial it in from my waist. It also means when I'm using the rear screen, I can turn off all the information and focus just on the image I'm making because I don't need to see my settings there. I've got my settings here. Thanks Nikon, that's a thoughtful little touch. Another nice little touch is the tilting screen. It's really nice to have a tilting screen on the side because I can hold the camera low on a tripod and not have to bend down, or I could hold it over my head and tilt it down like this so I could see over a crowd. And Sony's got that, but what Sony doesn't have is tilting to the side. Let's say I'm shooting in a vertical orientation. On the Nikon, I can flip the screen out like this and put the camera low to the ground and see it without having to tilt my head to the side. That's something I can't do on the Sony. Thanks, Nikon. Another win for Nikon, two CF Express Type B cards. That is the only correct answer for memory card slots. You know why? Because this means both cards are the same speed. I can write raw to both cards and not worry about one of them bottlenecking the other like I would on a Canon R3 or R5 that have a CF Express Type B and an SD card. The Sony A1 has two CF Express Type A card slots, and well, they're okay, they're good, but they have a pretty severe limitation, and that is the biggest card I can get is 160 gigabytes. In my Z9, I have two 512 gig cards, but I could go up to a couple of terabytes. I found real world stuff here, the 160 gigabytes is just not enough for a camera that can shoot 30 frames per second raw. When I'm shooting wildlife photography and I'm having a good day, I will inevitably fill this card up. And of course, it's going to fill up in the middle of the best moment. And then I have to stop and search around for another card and put it in, but I've already missed that moment. With 512 gigs, not only can I go continuously through a shoot, no worries, but I could probably go several days without having to format the card. That just means I have a backup there. It means I'm never interrupted. Of course, CF Express Type B is the right answer. It also helps that those cards are less expensive and about twice as fast as CF Express Type A. Seems like an obvious choice, but Nikon made the right one. Another benefit of the Z9, it shoots 120 frames per second. And yeah, it's only 11 megapixels. It's really just like a video feed, like 4K video, but written out as stills. So you might say, why not just shoot 4K video on my Sony A1? Well, first, that's a 16 by nine crop, and it's only eight megapixels. And if I wanna to get to a four by five ratio, like you would put on Instagram, that means I'd have to crop even deeper. But also, shooting video isn't the same. When you hit the record button, there's a lag before it actually starts recording. That means you're likely to miss the moment. The autofocus is not nearly as fast when you're recording video. And you also can't shoot in little tiny short bursts, so you end up wasting a lot of frames. It also is way worse for your workflow because I can just import 120 frames per second from this into Lightroom and sort through them like I always do. But on this, I'd have to pull a video file into Final Cut or Premiere and find that one frame and then export it. It's just, it's just not the same. So the A1 could do it, but the Nikon Z9 actually does it. Thanks, Nikon. For the next benefit, I'm gonna hit this ISO button here and look what I can do. I can go from ISO 100 down to ISO 64. And that's not an extended ISO, that's a native ISO. That's two thirds of a stop lower than the A1 or just about any other full frame camera. That means when I need to shoot wide open in sunlight, I can use a slower shutter speed when I want to. 
It means there are circumstances where I can get the shutter speed I want without having to pull out an ND filter. And do I wish it was ISO 10? Yeah, I wish every camera would go lower, but the Nikon goes the lowest. It also improves your image quality under optimal conditions. Thanks, Nikon. The next benefit the Z9 has over the A1 is built-in GPS. That lets me tag all my photos with location data, and that's extremely useful. I can pull up a map in Lightroom, and if I remember I took a sports picture at a particular auditorium, I can just zoom in there and narrow it down. For landscape photography, it means I could retrace my steps if I wanted to. It'll also set the clock from the GPS, which is really useful, especially when you shoot multiple cameras that tend to get the clocks out of sync and then you merge them all together, but they don't line up right because one of them was three minutes off. The Sony one could do this with a smartphone app, but that, it sucks. I, it'll get like a few shots with the GPS tagged and then inevitably I just lose the link and I stop using it the next day. Thanks Nikon for building it in. The next benefit, this big, beautiful screen. Okay, it's not much bigger, but it's a little bit bigger and it's a little bit sharper. That's really important because this screen is how your portrait clients are first going to see your work. It's how you're gonna verify the sharpness and exposure of your critical shots. Every manufacturer should be making these screens big and beautiful. This is a step in the right direction. For my next point, look at the shutter here. Off, on, and then a light. And that light lights everything up, all the buttons. And that is a lifesaver when you're suddenly doing astrophotography or you're shooting in a really dark auditorium and you don't want to light the whole room up with a flashlight. I mean, really, look how many buttons there are. At some point, you're going to forget where one of them is. With the Sony A1, you'd have to pull out your smartphone flashlight or something to find it. The fact that I can just light them up like this is huge. The Canon R3 has some lighted buttons, but the button to activate it is actually kind of hard to find in the dark, and then not all the buttons actually light up. Nikon did it right. And now for my last point, the price. It is a bargain. I know, it's $5,500, and that's not something many of us can actually afford, but that's a grand cheaper than the Sony A1 and it's got that vertical grip built in if you want that, and a bigger battery, things you'd have to pay extra for on the A1. It's a good value, even though it's expensive. And these benefits are gonna trickle down in the Nikon system to the next generation of Z5, Z50, Z6 cameras. So soon we'll all be able to take advantage of it and we'll all have another good option. Look, this has not been an objective review. I'm not trying to be balanced here. This is just straight up a love letter to a company that's been kicked around a few times, who's been struggling. It's amazing to see you come back. And for all the Nikon fans who didn't switch systems, what you're waiting for is here. And if this is out of your budget, I'm pretty sure Nikon has cameras coming soon that'll meet all of your needs. By the way, since we're being all lovey-dovey, let's talk about our Valentine's Day sale. Everything on our store is 20% off. Get your photography training. Education will make way more of a difference than buying new camera gear. We have our professional portrait training, our flash video training, our art and science of photography video training, as well as books on Lightroom, Photoshop, all with videos, and our award-winning stunning digital photography, the most popular photography book in the world for the last decade. So check everything out at Northrop Photo and use the coupon code LOVE22. Happy Valentine's Day, bye.